one, a room in Pinchby's house. I start this one. <laughs> well, madam, now have I dressed you and set you out with ornaments and perfumes, all for no other purpose but as people adore a perfume a corpse for a grave. Such or as bad, I think Master Sparkish's bed. Hold your peace. Nay, madam, I will ask you the reason why you would banish poor Master Harcourt forever from your sight. How could you be so hard-hearted? It was because I was not hard-hearted. No, no, a start love and kindness, I warrant. Twas. I will see him no more because I love him. A very pretty reason. I'm engaged to marry another man whom I cannot deceive or injure. Is it not wrong to give him your person without your heart? I'll retrieve it for him after I'm married a while. Marry? <laughs> Marrying to increase love is like gambling to become rich. You only lose what little you had before. Talk no more of Master Harcourt. I wish the other would come to secure my fidelity to him. You will marry him then? I've given him my word. And will my hand, too, when he comes? Ah, <laughs> uh, your humble servant, madam. A, a happy day to you and to us all. <laughs> Amen. And who have we here? As my chaplain, um, in the Harcourt, in memory of his humble service to you, and in obedience to your last command, refrains from coming into your sight. <laughs> Is not that he? Oh, fine, no. This, <laughs> this is the chaplain. To show... To show that he ne'er intended to hinder our match, he sent his brother here to join our hands. <laughs> his brother? <laughs> I knew you would not believe it. There, sir, I told you she would take you for your brother, Frank. Ah! His brother? <laughs> He's a trick left still, it seems. Ah, come on. Let, let us to church before the canonical hour is passed. Oh, for shame, you are abused still. Ah! <sighs> And are you still so lacking in belief? Oh, I cannot believe that you have so much belief. This is Ned Harcourt of Cambridge, Frank's twin brother. Your servant, sir. I cannot be so deceived, though you are. But I asked Frank if he could, if he could help me to a parson. He told me he had a brother in orders and straight away sent to him and, and sent him to me. Uh, yes. Frank goes, puts on the brother and a collar, and then tells you he is Ned. <sighs> sure. Are you your chambermaid? Uh, ask your chambermaid. Uh, chambermaids must know the difference between parsons and other men. They're so used to them. He's the canonical smirk and the clammy palm of a chaplain. <sighs> uh, most reverend doctor, pray let us end this fooling. With all my soul, divine, heavenly creature. He speaks like a chaplain indeed. And was there not divine, soul, and, and heavenly in what he said? Oh, I have oh. no more patience. Let us make an end of this troublesome love. So be it, seraphic lady, when you think it meet, so to do. <coughs> Though you delay our marriage, you shall not hinder it. Far be it from me to delay your marriage. I desire nothing more but to marry you presently. My noble and generous patron here would not hinder it. Yeah, no, faith, no, not I. No one else shall marry you. If I die first, or I shall die after it. Now you understand him, I hope. But, madam, he takes it ill to be refused. He shall marry us, madam. Invincible stupidity. He'd marry me as your rival, not your chaplain. Oh, come, come. Pray, madam, do not refuse this reverend divine the satisfaction of marrying you. I dare say he has set his heart upon it, good doctor. Mm -hmm. What can you hope or design by this? A reprieve for a day? At worst, if she will not marry me, I may at least hinder my rival's enjoyment for a time. No, come, come, madam. Such a deal of modesty on the first day. Yes, that please your worship. Married women show all their modesty the first day, because married men show all their love the first day. Come, tell me, I say, how wast baggage? He carried me up into the house next to the exchange. So you two only were in the room? Yes. He sent away a youth that was there for oranges. Did he so? But presently came up the gentlewoman of the house. Twas well she did, 
But what did he do whilst the fruit came? Kissed me a hundred times. Said he fancied he kissed my fine sister. Meaning me, you know. He said he loved with all his soul. And bid me to be sure to tell her so. And desire her to be at her window by eleven of the clock this morning. And he would walk under it at that time. And he was very punctual. A pox rewarding fort. And he said that if you were not within, he would come up and see her. Meaning me, you know, bud. Still. <laughs> For this confession, I'm obliged to her simplicity. But you stood very still while he kissed you? Yes. Would you have had me discover myself? Mm -hmm. But he did some beastliness to you, as you call it? Why, he put... What? The tip of his tongue between my lips, and I said I'd bite it. The dog! Nay, he has the sweetest breath I ever knew. Tis plain she loves him. Yet yeah, not enough to conceal it from me. But sight of him will increase her aversion for me and her love for him. I must strangle this monster love whilst I can. Here's pen, paper, ink, come mix. Sit you down and write. But what should I write for? I would have you write a letter to your lover. Oh, Lord, a letter to the fine gentleman. Yes, to the fine gentleman. Write as I bid you. Sir! Shan't I say, dear sir? Write as I bid you. Well, I shall write whore in your face with this penknife. Nay, no, good bud. Sir. Though I suffered last night your nauseous and loathed kisses and embraces, write. Nay, no. why should I say so? I told you, he had sweet breath. <coughs> right! Well, then. <coughs> now, let's see. Though I suffered last night your kisses and embrace. Impudence! Where is nauseous and loathed? I, I can't abide to write such filthy words. <coughs> right as I bid you, I'll spoil your writing with this. I will, I will, I will stab out those eyes that cause my grief. Oh, Lord, I will. So, nauseous and low, kisses and embraces. Hmm? On there. I would not have you design to repeat them. How writ it. On then. I then concealed myself from your knowledge to avoid your insolences. The same reason, now I am out of your hands. So? makes me own to you my unfortunate, though innocent frolic, of being in men's clothes. So? That you may evermore cease to pursue her who hates and detests you. So? What? Dear Sai hates and detests you as much as she loves her honour and her husband. I will never believe that I should write such a letter. What? He'd expect kinder from you? Come, now your name. Shan't I say, your most humble, faithful servant till death. No tormenting fiend. Now, wrap it up now, while I fetch some wax. And write on the back of it, for Mr. Horner. For Mr. Horner. Dear Mr. Horner, why should I send him such a letter? I will not. But then my husband will kill me. What if I write at the bottom that my husband made me write it? Then he would see it. I could write a letter and wrap it up like this. Dear sweet Mr. Horner, so, my husband would have me send you a rude, unmannerly letter but I won't, so, and would have me forbid you loving me, but I won't, so, and would have me say that I hate you, but I won't lie, there, but I must make haste before my husband comes in, I am poor dear Mr. <coughs> Horner, your most humble friend and servant to command till death, Marjorie Pinchwife. Now wrap it up like t'other, right, for Mr. Horner. I was detained by a sparkish coxcomb 
on the pretense of a visit to me, but I fear it was to my wife. What? Have you done? I either just now. What? You tremble? Would you not let it go now? Yes, indeed. But I went that. Now. Well, you are a good girl, then. Now, let me lock you in, my ch in your chamber until I return. And be sure not to come to the window whilst I am gone. For I have a spy in the street. At least, tis fit she should think so. If we do not cheat our women, they will cheat us. Now, to deal with the foe with false intelligence. So, sir, how prosperous the new design? Do you deceive only yourself? I deceive others, too. Grave matrons and husbands think me as unfit for love as they are. But their wives, sisters and daughters know better already. Already? Last night I was drunk with half a dozen civil persons and made free of their society and dressing rooms, and I'm already come to the privileges of warming smocks, sleeping on their beds, tying shoes and garters and the like. You have made good use of your time, sir. I am no, no more interruption to them when they sing or talk bawdy than a little French page who speaks no English. Ah, but do women of honour drink and sing bawdy songs? Um, amongst friends, uh, here's one. Be like this green and observe the privileges I have with <laughs> women of reputation. Well, Horner, am I not a woman of honour? As, uh... Good as my word. I'll be good as my word too, if you please withdraw into the next room. <laughs> please, sir, have a care of my dear honour first. One word more of honour and you'll make me incapable to wrong it. <laughs> to talk of honour and the mysteries of love is like talking of witchcraft and God that makes the charm impotent. Yeah. You can't blame a lady of my reputation for being so cherry. I've been cherry of it already, by the report I've caused of myself. Ah, but if you ever let other women know your dear secret, sir, it would come out. My censorious acquaintance may talk. I'll lie with them all and make the secret their own, then they'll keep it. <laughs> oh, sir, not that way. Devil take me, you sin. Sorious women, as we silence any other way. <laughs> but a secret is best kept by one person than by a multitude. Pray, do not trust anybody with that dear secret. Dear, dear Mr. Horner. <gasps> How now? Prevented, and almost as bad, found with my arms around another. What shall I say? Mr. Horner! I was trying of Mr. He was ticklish. I do love to torment the confounded toad. Let you and I tickle him. No, your ladyship will tickle him better without me. But is this your buying china? I thought you were at the china house. That's my cue. 
Ah, Pox, can't you keep your impertinent wives at home? I will not be a drudge to squire your wife about. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fellow, to squire women about for others is as bad as counting money that's not yours. <laughs> be not angry, Horner. <laughs> Tis I have reason to be angry, who must walk abroad even decently alone, or pin myself upon such ill-bred people as this. Prithee, what has he done? Nothing. <laughs> what do you take ill if he has done nothing? Do you think the confounded toad would come down to the coach? No, I had to come up. He knows China very well and is good for it, but he will not let me see it lest I beg some. But I will find it, and I will have what I came for. Lock the door, madam. <laughs> She's inside my chamber and locked me out. Impertinency. <sighs> Sir Jasper, if you suffer your wife to trouble me again here, <laughs> she shall carry you home a pair of horns. I cannot give you them myself, but I will find a way. <laughs> At first, finding her arms about him, tickling him, it seems, I was half jealous, but now I see my folly. <laughs> Poor Horner. Women, more impertinent, cunning, and mischievous than monkeys. She is rifling all I have. Oh, I'll get in the back way and rifle her for it. <laughs> poor angry Horner. <laughs> Stay here, I'll uh, ferret her out to you presently. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Fidget, he is coming into you the back way. Let him come and welcome, which way he will. But he'll catch you and, and use you roughly and, and be too strong for you. Don't, don't trouble yourself. Let him if he can. <laughs> I would not have believed this, but with my own eyes. <laughs> Where is this woman hater, this ugly toad? So. Women think him ugly. Tis his luck makes him so to them. Tis as my wife said, a handsome eunuch is as foolish as a huge coward. <laughs> Sir Jasper, your servant, where is the odious beast? In his chamber, with my wife. She's playing the wag with him. <laughs> is she now? He's a clownish beast. He'll play the wag with her again. <laughs> Come, let's help her. What? The door is locked. Ah, my wife locked it. <laughs> Didn't she now? Let's break it open. Oh, no, no, no. He'll do her no harm. <laughs> is there another way in? I'll disturb them. Where is this harlot, this impudent baggage? Oh, Sir Jasper, I'm glad to see you here. Did my vile grandchild come in hither just now? Yes. Well, where is she then? Lord Sir Jasper, I have rattled myself to pieces in pursuit. But, but what does she hear? No woman lodges here. No, no man, neither. This is Mr Horner's lodgings. So, there's no hurt in it. But where is he? In the next room, with my wife. Nay, if you trust him with your wife, I may with my biddy. <laughs> He's harmless company for a lady, like a snake without teeth. My <laughs> poor man! <laughs> oh, I can't find him. <laughs> oh, are you here, Lady Grandmother? Mm -hmm. I followed Lady Fidget hither. It is a pretty lodging. I have seen the prettiest pictures. <laughs> And I have been toiling for the prettiest piece of china. She has been too hard for me. <laughs> Do what I could. Oh, Lord, I'll have some china too. Good, Mr Horner, don't give other people china and me none. Come in with me too. Upon my honour, I have none left now. <laughs> Nay, you have denied your china before, but shan't put me off. <laughs> If he had China enough, I would have it. 
We women of quality can never have China enough. <laughs> I will have a piece for you another time. Thank you, dear Toad. What do you mean by that promise? She has an innocent, literal understanding. <laughs> Poor Mr. Horner. He has to please you all, I see. Aye, madam. <laughs> you see how they use me. <laughs> Poor gentleman, I pity you. I thank you, madam. I can never find pity but from reverend ladies like you. <laughs> the young ones never spare a man. Come, beast. Dine with us. We need you for cards after dinner. That's all their use of me, madam, you see. Come, slaver. I'll lead you. Oh, poor man! See how she tucks him! Kiss her. That's how to make such nice women quiet. That remedy is worse. They know I'll suffer anything rather than that. Prithee kiss her, and I'll give you that picture in miniature that you admired so. Prithee do. Nothing but that could bribe me. I love women, only in effigy and good painting. I'll do it. I'd adore the devil well painted. Oh, you filthy toad! Now I've done jesting. <laughs> I told you so. Foe, a kiss of his. Oh, has no more harm in it than one of his spaniels. <laughs> I, I shall now believe anything he tells me. <laughs> oh, Lord, Sir Jasper, a man. I would not be found here. What? Not when I am with you. No, no, my honour. Let's be gone. Oh, do let's, Grandmother. I do not know how he may censure us. To be found in this place? Away! <laughs> Looks like one. Well, what brings my dear friend hither? Your impertinency, sir. My impertinency? Had I been always thy friend? Honest Jack, always ready to serve thee in love or marriage, before thou art married, and um, am so still. Indeed. I believe you'd be my second now. Indeed. Then why so strange to me? Dear Rogue, I am still thy servant. As I am yours, sir. Would you send my wife a kiss? Is that it, sir? So, I can't discourse with a man, a married man, without him talking of his wife? Oh, let thy wife alone, and let thee and I be all one as we were. You should be kind and civil to me, sir, as I am so kind so civil to you, as to bring you this. Look you here, sir, a love letter, sir. Uh, uh, from whom? Uh, how? Uh, this is from your wife. Indeed. Am I not wondrous kind? Though he may not think her so. Ha, is this a trick of his or hers? The gentleman is surprised, I find. You expected a kinder letter? Faith, not I. How could I? I am sure you did. You are disappointed if women declare not their passion at first sight. Um, but what should this mean? Be sure I love you. Whatever my husband says, and uh, let, let him not see this, lest he come home and pinch me and kill my squirrel. <laughs> it, it seems he knows not what the letter contains. Now, sir. I think you'll say I've been an obliging friend and husband to bring you a letter from my wife to her gallant. Aye, devil take me, the most obliging in the world. <laughs> you may be merry, sir, but my jesting will suffer no, my honour will suffer no jesting. What does that mean? Though I've been so civil as to bring you this letter from my wife and let you kiss and court my wife to my face last night, I will not be a cuckold, sir. I will not! Thou art mad with jealousy. I never saw thy wife in my life but at the play yesterday. I caught her, kiss her. And I say again, though you kissed and courted last night my wife in men's clothes, that as she confesses in her letter, <laughs> both she and I say you shall not design it again, for you have mistaken your woman, sir, as you have your man. I understand how. Was that thy wife? Why not tell me to a she? Faith, my freedom with her was your fault, not mine. Faith, so twas. Fie, I'd never do it to a woman before her husband's face, sure. Uh, rather to my face, sir, than behind my back. That you shall never do, as you find from her letter. She would hinder you. 
Well, I must acquiesce and uh, be content with what she writes. I assure you, it was voluntarily writ. I <coughs> myself had no hand in it, to believe me. I do believe thee, Faith. Uh, pre present my humble service to her and tell her I will obey her letter and fulfil her desires, uh, be what they will. <coughs> Very well, then. Fare you well, sir. Play with any man's <coughs> honour but mine. Play with my wife. Any, man, any woman but my wife. And welcome. Now, what? I cannot have heard the reports of you, or does not believe them. It's in the letter. Dear sweet Miss Horner. I wonder how she could contrive it. What sayest thou? I, well, I, I now think it possible that you could cuckold the Grand Sultan amidst his guard of eunuchs. <laughs> You are a pretty brother-in-law. Neither go to church or to dine with your sister bride, sir. My wife denies her. My sister denies her marriage to you, sir, and has gone away disappointed. Yeah, sure, it was on a foolish scruple that the parcel was not in proper orders, but uh, it is modesty only. Mm -hmm. Well, let her be modest the first day. Uh, She'll come to herself at night, and I'll have my fill of her then. In the meantime, Harry Horner, uh, you shall dine with me. Um, I, I take my wedding at my aunt's in the piazza. <laughs> Thy wedding? What stalemate has lifted despair of her husband so? Oh, uh, this gentleman's sister. No stalemate. I'm <laughs> sorry for it. He seems much concerned for her. Uh, sorry for it? Why? What, what ill do you know of her? Um, none but by thee. It is for her sake, not yours, and another man that might have hoped. Another man? Well, 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 well. Uh, nay, since tis past, uh, he shall be nameless. He, Poor Harcourt. He seems much troubled at the match. Uh, uh, nay, brother, uh, do not go. I must, but I shall come to you at dinner. A, a rival for my wife? Already? True. Could be useful. <laughs> Yet while hunger is my source now, and I can fall heartily to without, uh, there may come a time when uh, a rival will be as good a source to a man for a wife as um, orange for veal. Mm. Damn rogue, thou hast set my teeth on it with thy orange. Mm. Ah, so. Uh, so we go dine at my brother Pitch wife's. Uh, and his wife? Uh, no, will they let her come amongst us? You and know your stingy country coxcomb will not share his wife with his friends as with his firk, small firk in a veil, which he keeps for his own drinking. And a gentleman can't get a taste. <laughs> well, when he's back turned, when he's back turned, his servants broach it at their pleasure and dust it away. Ha ha ha! Gad, I'm witty considering I was married today, but uh, oh, no, no, I will not dine with you unless you can fetch her too. Uh, but but why, Harry? I mean, you can surely get no pleasure from women now. Oh, my eyes are not gone. I love a good view yet, and I will not dine with you unless she does. Fetch her, but do not tell her husband tis for my sake. I'll try. But now I must away to my uh, to my aunt's lodging. Uh, tis on the way to Pig's wife, sir. Uh... <laughs> calls for aid, Doctor. I must help.
a room in Pitchwise House. Well, it seems I've got the London disease. I'm sick of my husband and former gallant. When I think of my husband, I tremble in cold sweat and want to vomit. When I think of dear Mr. Horner, I'm in a fever. Therefore, I'll make an end of my letter to him, which is finer than my last. <coughs> What? More letters? Lord, but if I fight me so. Do not stir, madam. My dear, dear Mr. Horner. Well, it seems I've taught you to write letters to good purpose. Let's see. Pardon my boldness in writing to you, which I would not have done had you not said you loved me. If you do, suffer me no more to sleep with a man whom I nauseate, loathe and detest. Now you write filthy words. I beg you to free me from this match, which was not of my choosing. Hmm. If you love me as I do you, then you will try, try for me tonight. For if you do, I shall be out of reach forever. Tomorrow I must leave, for I can defer no longer our... What follows our, eh? Our journey to the country, damn woman! Finish your letter, and then I'll finish you! Oh Lord, you were such passionate bad bird! How, how, what, draw up with a wife? Oh, do that at night when you can't hurt her. <laughs> I'm coming to invite you both to dinner. Uh -huh. Where's my wife? Making you a cuckold, sir, as all women do, as soon as they can. Come, come, sir. Surely a, a woman that would make a fool of her husband will let him win the first stakes in love? <laughs> ah, come, they, they say dinner for us. Go, we'll follow you. Uh, no, no, I shall not stir without you. Come, Madam Marjorie. No, I'll lead her my way. Laura told me. You are too shy of your wife. We wits have a saying. Cockaldry is like the smallpox. You can keep your wife from infection, but if she has the constitution for it, she'll have it sooner or later. as you intended. If you are false, I shall perceive it and punish you as you deserve. What follows, I can defer no longer hour. Must all out then, bud. Look there, then. I can defer no longer our marriage? Your wretched Alithia? What means this? My sister's name? To speak, I say. Aye, but you'll tell her. I will not! I'm stunned! Speak! I'd rather she be angry with me than you, bud. But to tell the truth, she made me write the letter and taught me what to write. I thought the style was better than her own. But why should she write her? Why should she have you write a letter for her? She can write herself. Why, she said it was because if Mr. Horner refuse her and be vain about it afterwards and show the letter, she could disown it, the hand not being hers. She could not make this up. And now I think of it. Horner seemed sorry that she'd married Sparkish. Does she disown her marriage for Horner's sake? Many love of fools. Women make me also. But, madam, your sister left the house this morning and has not been seen within since. She's been crying all day, it seems. In the corner. Where? Let me speak with her. Lord, she'll tell all. Or will you expose me? No, I, I must know whether Horner made her any promise, or, or whether she'd be married to Sparkish, or no. Pray, wait until I tell her that I have told you, or she'll kill me else. Go, bring her hither. She's not within to come out. 
I must go to Lucy, her maid, who first set me on. What lie to tell next? I'm at my wit's end. Horner can have her. I'd rather give him my sister than lend him my wife. Lord, bud, I told you how angry she'd be. Will she not come hither? She is ashamed to see you. If you go to her, she'll run to Mr. Horner, who has promised her marriage. And she will have no other, she says. Well, tell her she can have it. If she'll come out, I'll arrange it. Go! His estate is equal to that of Sparkish. His quality is the same, and his extraction much better. And I'd rather be his brother-in-law than his cuckold. <coughs> she would have you lead her to Mr Horner, with whom she will discuss the matter before she talks with you. She can't look you in the face, so she'll wear a mask. Uh, you, you must excuse her if she make no answer to you, till you have brought her to Mr Horner. Do not question her, nor chide her, and she'll come out immediately. Very well, very well. I shall, I shall speak not a word to her, nor require a word from her. Go! Oh, I almost forgot. She would also desire you to put out the candle. Very well, I agree to all. Make haste. There, it is out. I'd rather fight Horner for not lying with my sister than for lying with my wife. Wives and sisters are, are names that make you think of love and duty, pleasure and comfort. But instead they are plagues and torments, equally troublesome. Why, we have as much ado finding people to lie with our sisters as we do with keeping them lying with our wives. Is that you, sister? Come, let's be gone. But first, I must lock my wife in her chamber. Stay there, Mistress Marjorie. Come, sister. What, alone? No cockholds here. Nor their wives. <laughs> they used to wait and watch. Yes, a cuckold is often his wife's spy, and the hardest duty a married woman imposes upon her lover is keeping her husband company always. Yes, and his fondness wearies you mm. almost as soon as hers. A pox. Keeping the company of a cuckold after you've had his wife is as tiresome as the company of a country squire when you've got all his money. And first to draw him in, you are so kind, as you are with Pinch wife. How goes the intrigue with his wife? Did she not send a letter to you by him? Yes, that's a riddle I have not yet solved. Uh, the poor creature is willing, but silly too, and he keeps her up so close. So close, he makes her even more uh, willing. Yes. <laughs> Well, here's the man himself. What means this? Last time, sir, I brought you a love letter. This time, you see, a mistress. I think you'll say I'm a civil man to you, sir. Devil take me, the civilest I ever met. 
I fancy I understand thee better now uh, than I did the letter. But hark thee in thy ear. What? <clears throat> Nothing but the usual question, man. Is she sound? What? You would take her for a wench and me for a pimp? For sure, I know thou hast such a great acquaintance amongst the ladies that perhaps thou hast made love for me rather than let me make love to thy wife. Come, sir, I'm for no jesting. Nor I neither. Let's see her face. Do I know her? I'm sure you do. Why bring her to me, then? Because she is a relation of mine. Is she, Faith? Then thou art still more civil and obliging, dear rogue. Who desired me to bring her to you. Then she is obliging, dear rogue. You will make her welcome for my sake, I hope. Mm, I hope she's uh, handsome enough to make herself welcome. Unmask her. Speak to her yourself. She would never be ruled by me. Madam. Um, she says she must speak with me in private. Very well. I shall leave you together. And when I'm gone, I hope you'll agree. If not, sir, you and I shan't agree, sir. If she and I agree, it is no matter what you and I do. I shall fetch a parson to him. I shall find Sparkish and disabuse him. Well, I think I'm rid of her and shall have no more trouble from her. <sighs> Sisters and daughters, like a lender's money, are safest when put out. But <coughs> wives, like their writings, are never safe, except locked in our closets under lock and key. <sighs> oh, right. Now here's Sir Jasper coming up. Has he not enough to do to hinder his wife's sport, but he must other women's too? Step in here, madam. <coughs> My best and dearest friend. <laughs> The old style, Doctor. <laughs> well, be short, for I am busy. What would your impertinent wife have now? Well, guess the faith, for I do come from her. <laughs> to invite me to supper? Tell her I can't come. Nay, for, for my wife and the whole virtuous gang are resolved to come to you tonight in masquerade and are dressed already. I shan't be at home. Oh, pretty, don't disappoint them. They'll think it's my fault. Uh, I'll send the banquet in. Oh, but make no noise on it. They will not have it known they go masquerading and would come to no man's ball but yours. <laughs> well, tell them if they come, it will be in peril of your honour and theirs. <laughs> we'll trust you for that. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> Doctor, you too shall be my guest. But now I go to a private feast. <laughs> Scene five, the piazza of Covent Garden. <laughs> woman could have been so false to me. You of the giving and taking of liberty, she has taken it. Now you find in that letter. Yeah, well, if, if this hand be hers. It matters not a whit whether this be her hand or no. This hand, by her desire, led her to Mr. Horner's, where I took her just now, to, to fetch a parson to him, to deprive you of her forever. For it seems yours was but a mock marriage, sir. Aye, oh, yeah. yeah. She would have had me believe that it was Harcourt himself who married it in Parsons' guise. But I'm sure he told me it was his brother Ned. You were deceived, sir, not she. Now, I must be gone. Go to Mr Horner's house where I left her and believe your eyes. Yes, yes. yes. I shall go to her and call her as many... Oh, crocodiles, vixens, harpies, and other heathenish names that a poet would call her. His mistress who deceives him. Ah, but it's not short he on the end of the piazza. Ah, you are well met, madam, though you don't think so. I, uh, you have you been making a short visit to Mr Horner's? I expect you'll be returning there soon, when the parson is with him. 
Mr Horner and the parson, sir? Oh, no more dissembling, no more jilting. I am no longer a frank person. How's this? So for work, I see. What? Did you not send an impudent letter to Mr Horner, um, uh, with whom you seem to have clubbed in, in deluding me with his aversion to women, that I might not suspect him for my rival? Do you think the gentleman can be jealous now, madam? I write a letter to Mr Horner? Yes! Your brother showed it to me and told me he had left Horner's to find a parson to marry him to you. <laughs> well, much joy, madam. And to him, more joy. And to me, most joy for not marrying you. So I find my brother will break off the match and I can consent to it since I see this gentleman can be made jealous. Oh, Lucy, by his rude usage and jealousy, he makes me almost afraid I am married to him. Aren't sure that was Mr Harcourt and no parson that married us? No, I expect it was my type contrivance of yours and Horner's that, that Harcourt played the parson, but do you know, I'm glad of it. For, and another thing, did you know and that until now I never had any passion for you? And now I hate you. I might have married you money. Uh, but to show my unconcern, I shall uh, come to the wedding and resign you with as much grace as I would mm, a stale woman to a new cully, your servant. Oh. How was I deceived in a man? You'll believe a fool may be made jealous now? That easiness in him that suffers him to be led by a wife will likewise permit him to be persuaded against her by another. But marry Mr Horner? I'm sure my brother does not intend it. If he did, I would take thy advice of Mr Harcourt for my husband. I imagine he's a fine gentleman. A way impertinent. Is this not my old lady Lantaloos? Yes, madam. And here I hope we shall find Mr Harcourt. time, lest they interrupt us. Mm. To be private, let me lock the doors and I'll wait upon you presently. Oh no, shut up only, and your lips forever. We trust you. You know, all vanity's killed in me. I have no occasion for talking. <laughs> now, ladies, let us speak the truth in our hearts by this cup, for truth is nowhere else to be found. Not in thy heart, false man. You have found me a true man, I hope. Mm, not every way. Let us be merry. Why should our damn tyrants oblige us to live on the pittance of pleasure which they only give? We must not rejoice with wine or with noise. In vain we wake in a dull bed alone, whilst to our warm rivals the bottle they're gone. Then lay down these charms and take up these arms. Tis wine only gives them their courage and wit. Because we live sober, to men we submit. If for beauties you pass, take a lick of the glass. T'will mend your complexions, and when they are gone, the best red we have is the red of the grape. Then, sisters, late on, and damn a good shape. <laughs> Dear Cup, in token of openness, let us throw our masks off. <clears throat> Lovely Cup. Let me enjoy him first. No, I never part with a gallant till I've tried him. Mmm, dear cup that makes our husband short-sighted. 
And our bashful gallant bold. And the butler, lovely in our <laughs> eyes. Drink, eunuch. Drink, thou representative of our husband. Damn a husband. And as bad as a husband, an old chaperone. Oh, and an old grandmother. <laughs> And an English board and a French surgeon. We have reason to curse them all. The first spoils all gallants' industry. And the other's art makes them bold only with common women. <laughs> They'd rather risk vile disease from them than denial from us. <laughs> women of quality, like rich clothes, go untumbled at an asked for. Tell me, Beast, when you were a man, why did you choose a multitude in a common house for entertainment? rather than to be the only guest at a good table. Ceremony and expectation are insufferable when you're starving. People eat with the best stomach when every man is snatching for the best bit. I have heard that people eat most heartily of another man's meat. That is, what they do not pay for. When they're sure of their welcome, ceremony in love and eating is as foolish as in fighting. Falling on briskly should be done on all such occasions. <laughs> there is no more freedom than in our houses. A man may be as free as he pleases, as frolic, as gamesome, as wild as he will. And I heard you all declaim against wild men. Yes, but still, <coughs> we think wildness in a man as desirable as in a duck or rabbit. A ten man? But, ah, but your reputation scared me as much as your faces invited me. <laughs> Lord, we use reputation the same as you men, to avoid ill company, to enjoy better. We would be found us um, dishonest in our modesty only. I was deceived in you devilishly, but why that pretense to honour? The same reason you men feign business so often, to avoid ill company and to enjoy better. And more privately, those you love. But why would you ne'er send a friend a wink, then? Faith, your reputation frightened us as much as ours did you. You were so notoriously lewd. And you were so seemingly honest. Oh, was that all that deterred you? And so expensive, uh, uh, but you and our freedoms, you say. Aye, aye. aye. That I was uh, afraid of losing my little money as well as my little time, both which my other pleasures required. <laughs> so, do such as we expect money? Your pardon, madam, but I heard that great ladies, like great merchants, set high prices upon what they have, since they do not have to take the first offer. Such as we make sale of our hearts. We bribed for our love. So, oh. With your pardon, ladies, we must let you win at cards, or we lose your hearts. And if you make an assignation, tis at a goldsmith's, jeweller's, or china house, where paying for what you want, we pay for what we want. <laughs> Would you not have us assured of our gallant's love? Love is better known by liberality than jealousy. Mm. Now, ladies, let us drink to our gallants in waiting, who we must name, and I will begin. This is my false rogue. How? So, <laughs> all will out now. Did you not tell me? Twas for my sake only you reported yourself no man. Wretch, did you not swear to me? Twas for my love and honour that you pass for that thing you do. So, so. Come now, ladies, speak. This is my false villain. And mine, too. And mine. <gasps> then you are all three my false rogues, too, and there's an end on it. <laughs> there's no remedy. Sister Sharers, we must not fall out but have a care of our honour. We get no jewels of him, but save our honour, the jewel of greatest value, that shines to the world, unsuspected, though counterfeit. Nay, and is as good as if it were true, provided the world thinks so. Honour, like beauty, only depends upon the opinion of others. <laughs> well, Harry Common, I hope you can be true to three. My Lady Fidget! <laughs> Was this your cunning to come to Mr. Horner's without me? Uh, you have been nowhere else, I hope. Uh, no, Sir Jasper. <laughs> and you came straight hither, Hibbidi? Yes, indeed, Lady Grandmother. Oh, tis well. I knew once acquainted with Master Horner. They may be from him. She may masquerade with my wife and Horner. Her reputation safe. <laughs> Indeed, but uh, here's a party coming that may spoil our pleasure. Uh, but wait in there whilst I send them away. You would not take my advice. 
advice to go before your husband came back. He'll now discover all. Go now and leave the rest to me. Are you weary of me already? No, my life is to secure our love and your reputation with your husband. He'll never receive you again else. You don't want him to. You'll be my husband now. I cannot, dearest, since you are married to him. Every day in London, women leave their first husbands and go and live with other men. For sure, you make me angry, but I love you so. Uh, but they're coming up uh, in again, in. I hear them. <laughs> Come, madam. Neither your changing your dress, your confident assertions, nor your false witness there shall persuade me I did not bring you hither just now. Here's my witness. Mr. Horner, did I not bring this lady to you just now? Now must I wrong one woman for another, but that's nothing new for me. In these cases, I am still on the criminal side against the innocent. Pray speak, sir. Oh, uh, but then truly, uh, you did bring that lady to me just now. Oh! What mean you, sir? I always took you for a man of honour. Uh, aye, so much so, I must save my mistress, come what will. Yeah, if I had had her, she would have told me that the moon was pie. I dare but speak and solve the riddle of which I am author. Unfortunate woman, a combination against my honour. But tis your censure now which I must suffer, which troubles me, not theirs. I will not only believe your innocence, but make all the world believe it. Horner, I am concerned for this lady's honour. And I must be concerned for a lady's honour too. This lady has her honour, and I will protect it. My lady is not her honour but gave it to me to keep. I will preserve it. I understand you not. I would not have you. What's the matter with them all? Come, Horner, no more dispute. The parson is below. I'll employ him, if this lady please. What do you mean, sir? Uh, I, what does he mean? Uh, why, I've resigned your sister to him. Uh, he has my consent. But not mine, sir. A uh, lady's injured honour can only be repaired by him who wronged it. Marry her, sir, or... Oh, Lord, they'll kill poor Mr Horner. Besides, you shan't marry her whilst I look on. I'll not lose my second husband, so... What do I see? My sister in my clothes. Do not quarrel about finding work for the parson, for you shall marry me to Mr Horner, for I believe you have had enough of me. Oh, damn loving fool. <laughs> Pray... Pardon me, sister, for telling so many lies of you. I suppose the riddle is made plain now. No, that must be my work. Good sir, hear me. I shall hear no more women, but make them all silent thus. No, that must not be. Well, very well, sir, you shall be first then. Tis all one to me. Hold. Pray, what's the matter, sir? I beseech thee, communicate, sir. My wife has communicated, sir, as yours may have done if she knows him. Him? Sure! <laughs> Do you mock me, sir? I, I, I tell you, he has whored my wife and yours as well, and all these women here present. He is a disguise, he's dissembling and hypocrisy. Do not fool me, sir. <laughs> he cuckold you, it cannot be! <laughs> oh, dear. But you say he's a, a rogue? A dissembler? Well, sister? Is he a hypocrite? A dissembler? A hypocrite? A dissembler? Speak, young harlotry! Oh, master, maybe. Oh, my head, too! Thou libidinous lady! Thou harloting harlotry! Hast thou done it then? Oh, speak, good horner! Art thou a rogue, a dissembler? I'll save you, and her too, if she'll hold her tongue. Thanks, thou. I'll give thee. Pray, hear me, sir, the unfortunate cause of this confusion. Your wife is innocent. I set to telling lies concerning my mistress to break off the match between Mr. Sparkish and her and make way for Mr. Harcourt. Then, then my mistress was not false to me. Uh, but it was you that deceived me. <laughs> that brother that was to have been. Oh, who is who is the frank one now, eh? To take his wife to her lover? Ha! I assure you, sir, she came not to Mr. Horner out of love. Hold. I told lies for you, but you shall tell none for me. For I do love Mr. Horner with all my soul. Please, dear idiots. Horner, I am the doctor's guest. He must excuse our intrusion. 
But what's the matter, gentlemen? Tis well you are come, or else I die for a crime never committed, and these innocent ladies with me. Pray satisfy these gentlemen that, uh... <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> Upon the word of a physician, sir. <sighs> Truly, I do believe you. <laughs> Pardon, virtuous lady, and dear of honour. <laughs> Then's all right again. Aye, aye. And now let us satisfy him too. A eunuch? Can no fooling with these, sir. I shall bring half the surgeons in France to swear it, sir. But when I left London, he was the lewdest fellow in. He has been in France since. Mm -hmm. Come, listen to these ladies and gentlemen. Haven't you all heard the late sad reports of? Poor Mr. Horner. Aye, aye. Jealous fool, dost thou doubt it? He's a mere French gelding. Do not disparage poor Mr. Horner so. For sure to my knowledge. Oh, I... hold! Stop her mouth! It's true upon my honour, sir! Do you think we would be seen in his company? Trust our unspotted reputations mm. with him? This you get by trusting your secret with a fool. Peace, madam. Well, doctor, is not this a good plan that carries man on unsuspected and brings him off safe? Well, if this were true, but my wife... Brother, your wife is innocent. Beware too strong an imagination, lest, like a gambler expecting an unlucky throw, it should come. Women and fortune are truest to those that trust them. And any wild thing grows more fierce and hungry for being locked up. Ah, uh, there's doctrine for all husbands, Mr Harcourt. I have learnt so much, madam, that I'm impatient till I am one. I have learnt so much, I will never be one. <laughs> <laughs> now, because I'll there have my parts disparaged, I'll never be one. I, alas, can't be one. And I must be one, against my will, to a country wife. And I must be a country wife still, I find, for I can't, like a city one, be rid of my musty husband and do what I wish. Now, sir, I pronounce your wife innocent. I am the only one exposed to shame, which I will straight drown in wine, as you shall your suspicion. Indeed, she's innocent, sir. I'm her witness. She came out only to see her sister's wedding, and what she said to you of her love for Mr Horner was just innocent revenge and her husband's jealousy. Was it not, madam? Speak, since you have me tell more lies. Yes, indeed, but... For my own part, I would believe all. Cuckolds, like lovers, must themselves deceive. But his honour is least safe, too late, I find, who trusts it to a foolish wife or friend. Vain fox, but court and dress and go to bother to pass for women's men with one another. But he who aims by women to be prized, first by the men you see, must be despised. <laughs>